Good morning, everyone, to Marketing Matters. I'm Sarah Touchstone with Landmark Title, your social media marketing and education strategist. We are joined today by Tiffany Hobgood. Tiffany is, her title at Landmark Title doesn't even cover everything that she does. Tiffany is the, I want to say the VP of our escrow operations. Is that correct? That's correct. Nailed it. But like I said, she does so much more for us at Landmark Title. If there's a question on what to do, we ask Tiffany. So she is really, she is the Landmark Title go-to lady for all things title and escrow. That's what I'm going to be calling you from now on, Tiffany, the go-to lady. Tiffany is also incredibly acclaimed. She's a part of a lot of boards. And Tiffany, what was the latest that you got initiated into? Um, I am the president of the Arizona State Escrow Association and the president-elect for the American Escrow Association. Highly acclaimed. So we have her on today to talk about escrow tips because this is the last and final stage when it comes to helping your clients get these deals closed. A lot of times we just go, we hand it off to our escrow officer and say, go make magic happen. But let's talk a little bit about what the magic actually is and how we can better educate our consumers when it comes to title and escrow. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some escrow tips for you to make you the best you can for your customer. A little bit about me. Uh, Sarah gave me a great introduction, so I don't know if I need to say much more, but uh, my name is Tiffany Hobgood. I am the Vice President of Escrow Operations for Landmark Title. I have been in the industry since 1993. Um, I am an Arizona native, born and bred. And the reason why I do what I do is because I am very passionate about our industry and everyone who is in our industry and what we do every day. Um, so live by passion, that is my why. So let's start with a couple of different tips for you. Um, we do have a drilled down version that gets really high level into all this, but I just want to give you guys a little bit of nuggets that you can take back with you today. So let's talk about tip number one, details and documents. Um, one of the best things that you can do to start off your transaction uh, the best and on the right foot is to provide us with all the details that you have in your transaction. So the fully executed contract along with any and all addendums, counter offers, the pre-qualification uh, document with the lender's contact if your party is going to be obtaining a loan, any of that information that we can get up front is going to make us the best step forward uh, with the consumer and with the lender. Any and all client contact information that you can share with us, um, their, their full name, their email address, their phone number. Um, is there anybody else that they might be working with as well? Let's say that we have um, an older couple and their daughter, or their son are helping them with the transaction. Um, give all of that information to your escrow officer up front. It will make them more informed when they're speaking with and doing the intro calls um, to your customers for the transaction. Um, any special instructions? Um, do we know that we have a deceased party? Um, do we know that our parties will be traveling during the transaction? Um, are they out of state? And we need to know that as far as coordinating notaries, uh, time differences. Um, are they traveling outside of the country uh, so that we can make sure that we're preparing signings appropriately? Just little tips um, that can help the escrow officer have as much information as possible for your customer. And then your commission breakdown. Um, we know a lot of companies have their own direct um, distribution authorizations for commission. Um, but if you can give us this, your split front, it helps us with preparing a net sheet and more detailed information that we need when preparing the settlement statement for your customer. Um, also, I know she just skipped to the next tip because I paused. Um, <laughs> we'll go back. Today was <laughs> marital status. Marital status is really big. Um, if we 
uh, if we have a single person purchasing, just so we can prepare them that we do need to have a spouse sign a disclaimer deed. Okay details that you might have that you could find beneficial, share that with your uh, escrow professional. It gives them all the tools that they need to make those intros, get those details, and get things moving on your transaction. Okay, tip two. Tip two, um, reviewing the title commitment. I very much encourage every transaction to take a peek at the title commitment when it comes in. This can provide a lot of vital information to help prevent any kind of delays um, in your transaction or prepare your customer. The biggest things that we see that comes up where Arizona is a very populous state and we have a lot of people with common names. Um, and one of the things that it'll searches is any kinds of liens or judgments that may be um, due by that person, not just attached to the property. So if you have someone that you're working with that has a fairly common name, prepare them in advance. There's a possibility that your escrow officer will be reaching out to them for some more detailed personal information to clear any kind of uh, potential judgments, liens that might come up for somebody else who has a very similar name as them. It doesn't mean that it is them. It doesn't mean that they um, are the ones who have to pay it. We just need to show proof that it's not them. Um, that is one of the biggest stumbling blocks I think escrow incurs when it comes to the title commitment. The other things I encourage you to look at, check out the vesting in the Schedule A of the title commitment. Make sure it matches the seller on your contract. Uh, in some cases, there might be... Um, Maybe a, a young couple purchased the property and one of their parents co-signed and they forgot they were on title. Uh, maybe we have deceased parties. Uh, maybe we have a former spouse that's still on title. Um, things that we can catch at the very beginning. And also you can say, hey, I just got the title commitment in. I noticed so-and-so uh, didn't sign our contract, but they're on title. Can you tell me a little story? Uh, this way we're all prepared. The seller's prepared. Nobody's caught off guard. Legal description. Take a peek at the legal description and make sure that we did search the proper party. Um, in some cases, when we're dealing with investors who own multiple properties, uh, they may own the same property on the same multiple properties on the same street, and it has happened where. Um, we've searched the wrong property and either that was done just because of a parcel number hiccup or a, leak or a property address, but just make sure that legal description is what your party intends to sell. Liens and judgments, we touched a little bit on this, but the commitment's going to show all the requirements that your escrow professional needs in order to transfer clean title to the new buyer um, and ensure any lender that the, uh, for new financing that they're in first lien position. So take a peek at that and see if something pops up. Um, one of the biggest things that I can say is uh, mortgage payoffs. So uh, your seller has a mortgage payoff. We're gonna collect that. We're gonna order those statements at closing. We're gonna get that information, but maybe there's a line of credit on the property that the seller forgot about, or uh, maybe they don't realize that it's actually a lien on their property. They think it's just a personal loan. So these are kinds of things that can be caught in the very beginning and prepare your seller. Also, if you are a listing agent and prepared them a net sheet, this may be an opportunity to have that discussion of, is there anything due on it? Maybe it's paid in full and it's a zero balance and we just need a statement to show that but this allows you to get ahead of them with regards to any net sheets that you may have prepared. Solar, the commitment will also show if there's a current um, UCC filing to reflect solar. Um, so this could be a heads up for anyone who may or may not have known if there was solar leased or loan on the property. And it shows a lot more uh, requirements for entities, requirements for um, trusts, any taxes, are the taxes paid current on the property? Another great tip for listing agents for net sheets, if you prepare that net sheet and the commitment comes in and shows there's back taxes, that's a conversation you can have with the seller up front. It helps when we get to closing and they're prepared to pay that and maybe the net doesn't look exactly what they were expecting. Uh, HOA, 
The commitment will also reflect that there's a homeowners association. Now, this doesn't mean that the HOA is currently active or that there's any dues, um, but it does reflect that there was ever a notice filed with the county of an active association at some point during the trans or during the property's um, history. Okay, tip number three loan documents and signing. Um, so your escrow officer um, has a lot of um, responsibilities with collaborating with the lender. This typically happens about three to five days before the actual signing. The lender has the requirements to disclose to the consumer as required by the um, CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the, um, the CD, the closing disclosure, uh, three days prior to the buyer signing loan documents. So your escrow officer will be collaborating with the lender several days prior to closing um, to prepare the figures and make sure their CD is an accurate reflection of closing and what's disclosed to the consumer, to the borrower. And so we're going to be preparing those figures. So any information you can get to us, again, commission, home warranty invoices, um, any addendum, so if something changed last minute, um, let's say there was a credit for something uh, during the inspection um, or some other appraisal may have come in short, so now we have a change in sales price. Again, make sure you get the, that information to your escrow officer as soon as possible. That will ensure that this collaboration is quick and effective and accurate so that when the borrower comes to sign, there's no surprises. The settlement statement. When you, as the escrow office or the um, agent, receive a copy of the settlement statement, take a peek at it. Look through it. Make sure the sales price is correct. Make sure the earnest money is accurately reflected. Make sure that your commission, one, and most importantly, make sure your commission is correct. Um, take a look and see, was there a home warranty and is the proper party paying for it? Just peruse it and make sure that it looks what you're expecting it to look and also take a look at if you're representing a listing agent or a listing if you're a listing broker take a look at the uh, seller's net was that what you guys had discussed in the very beginning of what they might anticipate to receive uh, if you're representing the buyer are you do they know that this is kind of what they were expecting to come in with um the appointment so we as escrow agent will reach out to your client whether it's a seller or the buyer to coordinate their appointment and um, we will do the seller, we will coordinate them um, as early as possible in the transaction um, as we can based on all the available statements. Uh, typically we will wait till we have at least collaborated the closing disclosure with the lender because uh, we as escrow agent are also responsible for providing the seller with a closing disclosure. So we need to make sure that's as accurate as possible. Your escrow agent will advise you once those appointments are set, both with the seller and the buyer, just so you are aware of them being scheduled. Now the buyer's appointment um, cannot be scheduled if they are obtaining a loan until we actually have loan documents. Uh, in many cases, we don't receive those until after CD collaboration and sometimes not until the day of signing. Um, but we certainly will get that coordinated as quickly as possible for you and your consumer. But do prepare your buyer that there is the chance that they may have to sign and close on the same day, uh, just to prepare them for their scheduling, uh, for their work schedule. Um, but certainly we'll do our best to not have that be a rush for them. Uh, good funds law. Um, many of you probably already know, but just to touch on a quick tip, Arizona does have a good funds law, which requires that the escrow agent have certified funds uh, for use in order to record and disperse. So currently we are accepting uh, a cashier's check or a wire transfer. Those are the two things that can be accepted as part of closing. Now, wire transfers, I'm sure you guys are all very familiar with wire fraud. Um, it is very prevalent and it is still around and the fraudsters always get ahead of us, right? Um, they're, as soon as we catch up with what they're doing, they find a new and inventful and creative way to try and get someone else's funds. Um, so as we do, um, and I'm sure you do, and I know the lenders do, we all talk about wire fraud and the importance of the consumer always calling the escrow agent through a trusted number to verify 
identify those wiring instructions before they send their money. It's really important um, because that is usually one of the biggest down payments they make of their life. And we wanna make sure their funds are protected. Um, signing versus closing and recording. Um, so signing is actually when they sign their documents. They actually come with either our, into our office or with a um, mobile notary and they sign their actual documents. Now I know in some states they have round table closings where everyone comes together, they sign and the closing is done. Like that is their closing recording. Um, in Arizona, we actually have everything signed, all funds in before we can actually record. So in some cases, uh, I know the buyers are at the table or the sellers are signing and they are expecting keys or money. Um, and again, sometimes we find that's really prevalent for people who are moving here from out of state where they're used to, I sign, everything is done and, um, and we're ready to go. I get to go move into my house now. Um, so really it's just educating upfront on the differences between a table closing state and Arizona which is not a table closing state. One other uh, tip, and I touched on this earlier on providing details is with appointments. If you know, let's say we're closing early um, or, and we're ready to close, but the buyer was traveling. It wasn't gonna be an issue previously because he was gonna be in town, but now we're closing early and our buyer's traveling. So if you know that, or maybe they had to jump out of town for a, a work appointment or a family emergency, just let us know. We have mobile notaries all over um, and can definitely take care of your customer. My favorite story to tell is um, I personally had a closing and uh, it, was, it was a closing early. Our customers had planned a very long awaited two week vacation in the mountains. They planned to be back before our closing. So it wasn't going to be an issue, but we're closing early now and now they're in the mountains on this two week vacation. So I was able to track down a notary who was able to drive two hours into the mountains to sign our customers and then get the documents back to us for closing the next day. It really awesome of this notary to do that. Um, my second story, as we get into the colder weather and snow starts to happen all across the United States, um, I have loan documents. It's um, my seller or my buyer is out of state and they're currently in the middle of, and I've got a lock expiration. I've got people, a seller who has got a contingent purchase. I've got to find a way to get this borrower signed and get documents back. Um, I made call after call after call and was able to find a notary who was willing. He actually drives a, a snowplow truck um, as like a second job. He was willing to go out into the blizzard to go take the signing for us. Amazing. So there are times, I mean, we try everything and anything to accommodate and try and get that consumer signed as quickly as possible when it's not within our control. Um, there are times when it doesn't quite work out, but that's, that's not the norm. Um, but do know the your escrow officer is behind the scenes um, waving that wand. And I think escrow people in our industry are superheroes. They are doing everything in their power every day to make sure that everything is perfect closing of your transaction. That's that magic I was talking about, Tiffany. That's right. Magic Waving that wand. <laughs> they are superheroes in my opinion. So, um, so they do a great job. Um, okay. So now we go on to our final, I think it's our final tip of the day. Disbursement. I think this is everyone's favorite part of the transaction. It has recorded. We have given you the great notification to your customer. Yay, congratulations. You are a new homeowner or you have sold your other home. Congratulations. So disbursement, um, that happens upon actual recordation. So we cannot disperse prior to that occurring. Um, in today's environment, just because we're dealing with a lot of same day sign, what we call sign, fund, and record, which means the consumer signing in the morning, the lender funds by the afternoon, and then we release it to record, you know, that sometimes can go past wire cutoff. So um, wiring funds are not always expected same day. 
So just to kind of have that tip and that expectation for your seller, if he's expecting some funds, or if we have a contingent closing, um, let your escrow professional know, hey, we have, um, you know, my seller is buying another house and they're closing the same day. There's different ways that escrow companies can coordinate with each other, try and get, uh, if we're within the same state, um, we may be able to work out something if we miss wire cutoff. But again, the more communication we can have, the more information you can share, we can strategize and work to find a resolution for a situation. Anytime we're wiring funds to prevent wire fraud, we are gonna verbally call and verify wiring instructions. So that goes for the seller, that goes for commission. If we're wiring commission, you're gonna hear from our office, we're going to call you and verbally verify that information. And we do that to protect your money. We do not want your commission going somewhere else. Uh, payoff statements, if it's not one of our larger um, payoff lenders that we wire to a lot, we're also gonna call them, we're gonna confirm. That's the newest form of wire fraud is payoff fraud. So we wanna make sure that we are protecting, um, again, the seller's funds, that it's getting to the right place to satisfy their lien. But just um, expect it timeframes to prepare everyone in the transaction. Um, you know, wired funds may arrive the day of closing, but typically it's the next business day. Uh, so that goes for payoffs, that goes for seller's funds, commission, anything we're wiring. Um, expect it the day after closing and the blessing will be that it shows up the day of. Same for couriers, if we are currying um, things or overnighting checks or docs or any information um, that will usually go out the day of, sometimes the day after. So within 24 to 48 hours, a courier um, will be received or your FedEx package if you're requesting it. Sometimes we don't have control over overnight couriers. We know the weather can kind of get in our way a little bit, um, but we do have tracking abilities to be able to find that package. So to wrap up, um, the, the biggest thing I can give you is just be as open as you can. Give as much information as you want to. You can never overload your escrow officer with too much information. Um, we are gatherers. We are collectors of information and data, and that's what makes your transaction the smoothest and best it could possibly be. So I just wanna thank you all for allowing me to be here today and give you these little nuggets of information. Um, if anybody has any questions, I don't, see any minutes. Um, I don't see anything in the Q and A box, but I would be happy to answer any. Ooh. We get thank yous. That's what we get in the Q and A box, Tiffany. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was great information. So. Thank you. If anybody does have any questions for Tiffany, Tiffany, would you um, put your contact information in the chat window as well? And of course, you can always reach out to our business development managers to get in touch with Tiffany. So any questions that you might have for her, just direct them back to Landmark Title. She is an amazing resource for us and we're so glad to have her. Thank you so, so much. My pleasure. I'm going to wrap up. Oh, look, did you even have little things pop up? Great presentation. Tiffany also does that. Your, your other presentation is that an hour or two hours long? It is an hour and a half. It can go two hours if we get a lot of uh, questions and participation. It really drills down um, on the specific as well as going over a settlement statement and a title commitment. Nice. So if you are interested, and Tiffany's done a couple of these, I think. So yes. if you are interested in her full presentation, reach out to your business development manager and they can get her scheduled um, again for another presentation. That's one of the great resources that you really do have with Landmark Title is not only do we offer this great content for you, uh, but you get a say in it because you get the opportunity to work closely with your very own business development manager to help educate you, inform you, and just overall make you a better real estate or help to make you a better real estate agent. So speaking of being a better real estate agent and classes, we have a lot coming up this fall. Fall is a great time because our market slows down a little bit. 
So if you've been putting off taking some of our great landmark title classes because you are too busy with real estate, now is a great time. There is one more in the Launch Your 2022 Business on a Path to Success series. It was a three-part series. You didn't need to attend the other two to attend the last one. That is coming up. Well, no, wait. It says Tuesday, October 28th. I think it's Thursday. So um, the other two were Thursday. So this is going to be tomorrow at 1130 to 1230. Um, and that's going to go over financial planning and PLLCs or PL, excuse me. PLLCs was the other one before. But this is a great one to get you set up on the right track for your 2022. If you want to attend, let us know. And then next week on Tuesday, November 2nd, there's an Instagram basics class. This one's going to be in person. This is hosted by Patty and Michael over in Glendale in the Anku Financial Training Room. If you'd like to attend, Instagram is really is one of the quickest um, growing social media platforms, particularly with Instagram Reels. So if you want to attend this, let us know. We'll get you signed up. And then, of course... It's first week of the month next week, which means it's time to go over your current market stats. And we do that in none other than the Market Insights class. This is the first Thursday of every month. The next one will be November 4th at 9.30 a.m. So get on, get registered, attend these market stats classes. These are really great and give you a great idea of what's really going on. And then we've got our final uh, Zoom CE class coming up next week as well. So as soon as you hop off Market Insights, you can hop on our Zoom CE class and get commissioner standards. You still have time to get these CE credits in before the end of the year if you need to renew or just prepare, prepare for the future, for registering. Like I said, fall's a great time because Real estate tends to slow down. So it's a great time to get these in and getting them on a Zoom platform is incredibly convenient. So we've got Mike and Sally Litico coming back. This is going to be Thursday, November 4th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. There's the link if you need to register. If you need, um, if you want, we can send the link to you as well. Reach out to myself or our business development managers. And then we've got another PLLC S Corp PC class coming up. If you are doing a high volume of business and real estate, you really need to consider setting up a particular business. But how? How do you do that? Find out on Wednesday, November 10th. This is from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And guess what, guys? Not only is it great information, but it's also a CE class. Yes, you'll get three hours general course. So this one's going to be in person in Goodyear reach out if you'd like to attend. And then last but certainly not least, we have a HUD class coming up. Patty and Michael kind of specialize in doing these HUD classes. I have a feeling there's a lot of this out in the West Valley, but the particulars of this process are always changing. So attending one of these, if you do HUD or you're interested in HUD, is a really great idea. This one is going to be Tuesday, November 16th, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. So if you'd like to attend this, this one will be in Glendale, let us know. And that's it, guys. That's it for us today on Marketing Matters. Thank you all so much for joining us. If you'd like a copy of the recording, because we did go over a lot of really good information. So if you'd like a copy of the recording, just let us know. Our business development managers will be happy to send you a copy as well. Thank you to Beth, Becky, Melinda, Mary, Zach, Eric in Las Vegas, Jessica, Patty, and Michael. You guys are an amazing team. And as always, thank you to Landmark Title for allowing us to bring you great content like today on Marketing Matters every Wednesday at 10 a.m. And Landmark Title, we've got seven offices across the valley and one in Prescott, to service all of your real estate escrow title needs. Please reach out to us. We'd love to be on your next contract and work with you.